Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in action again. It's a beautiful Thursday here in the great, great, great city of Peoria, Arizona. Lots going on. This episode is brought to you by Spade. Zero sugar, zero calories, all natural, six flavors, cola, yuzu lime, guava, blueberry acai, kiwi strawberry, Dr. Spade, only six ingredients, including water, sweetened with the most premium, pure form of stevia on the market, no bitter aftertaste, and that's the truth. Caffeine-free, dye-free, added electrolytes for hydration benefit, just as healthy as a sparkling water, and just as flavorful as a traditional soda. Timbo Spade 10 is the discount code. Try it out. You'll like it. Amazon links in the bio. Thank you very much, Spade. Sipping one right now. Get the mind right. And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's so simple. You go to the App Store, download Prize Pick, pick more or less than your favorite players in the NBA, NHL, UFC for the chance to win 100 times your money. Available in states like Texas, California, and 30 more. Place a $5 lineup to get $50 instantly. No strings attached. Instant fifty dollars for all new users who use use code Timbo, capital T Timbo. And they got a free square. They got a free square. A fella named Caleb Williams. All he's got to do is score over one pass yard, and you win that square. So easy chatter code Timbo. Here we go. We're here with the legend Joe, sounding like he got some good sleep tonight, uh, last night. You make you can and make almost, any words sound just fucking dirty as fuck. What? <laughs> I'm listening to you just read that off and just uh, get, just saying premium just sounds as filthy. <laughs> <laughs> sounds it sounds like a sexual rotten word. Okay, yeah. so we're having Joe. He's having issues with his teenager son yeah. stepping up to him, wanting to battle him. Now, was he giving you a little lip this morning? Yeah, I, I was going to bring him in this morning, and he's uh, he's we, we've been going steadily downhill for years you know by, by years since we moved back but he's well he you moved him to great falls he made yeah. some buddies in high school came down here his side, huh? that's what you're gonna do well i'm looking at it from his side that's what i like to <laughs> please do, do here please do. we have radical open mindedness here in this building <laughs> <laughs> nice okay so you moved from great falls moved his butts he probably fit in pretty good at great falls he, he liked it won't lie i won't lie and then came down here and now he's online He's uh, stuck in a rut. Yeah, unlo- uh, online, he's fucking. He's just going. He's going nuts. He's fr- he's blaming me for everything, which I don't like. And he, this morning, he, uh, I was, I was like, I'm. T- we're tired of your disrespect in, in the family. And he's he like, said that at the at the at the family. Uh, this br- was brunch. on the way on the way here, and I'm dr- on the way here this morning. I'm like, I'm t- the, the family's tired of your disrespect, and he goes, I don't disrespect anybody but you. I'm speaking for the family here. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then so I fucking I rear back and I'm I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. And then he, say? and he chuckled, which is not okay in my book. Uh huh. <laughs> which which he, all all my uh, it's all all my bluff charges have been rebuffed and laughed at. So then so so I'm like turn this motherfucker around. So I so and I'm I'm as <laughs> so we go back home and then I'm like get the fuck out of the car, leave your phone. And he and he gets out of the car. He doesn't leave his phone. He's and he's just walking. I'm like you want to do this here? And he's and he he, he I can tell he thinks about it. Cause he's a lot bigger than me. He is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking I want to fucking clean him up. No three twos. Take <laughs> no, him down no, a little no. bit. No. And and so uh, I was I was gonna rip on his liver or something. But I I uh, I, I don't I don't I want to be the guy beating on his son. Well, especially in front of all the neighbors. Let him look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hide who I am. But dude, I I would be, I would be. It would be crazy to see any other father that would be able to withstand the disrespect my son's given. Especially the way the way I was raised, the way you were raised. Fucking bugs you and put you fucking down. My dad would have put me down if I would have said the stuff he did. It's, I it's, wish I could actually see it. And remember, this is one side of the story. So I would it, love it, to hear it, Joey's side of the story. It, 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 I mean, he, he, uh, he I, I, t- I told you when he woke me up with the, uh, the marijuana stuff, right? He said, I, I, I smell it. Yeah, he's like, I, I want the truth out of you. He's just coming at me not like a son. <clears throat> and it's, it's going to end with me whooping his ass, and that's fine. It's got to happen. Well, I'll God damn you it! You keep telling me you're gonna, you say you're gonna bring him in here, and I'm looking forward Dude, to seeing him. Dude, we were on the on the way. It's like on the and, and he fucking and I, and I and I did the the, the old man dad thing. I turn this motherfucker around, <laughs> but yeah, I, and I wish I wouldn't have, but now I'm here. Yeah, okay, we're here now. Um. <sighs> Every time I fucking even think about taxes, they just oh, they just creepy. piss me off. Oh dude. yeah, you have no idea. It's almost like if you hustle, if you really hustle, you build your own business, you do, you do, you stay disciplined, you stay consistent. 
You just get fucked more. Yeah, almost, man. I mean, it's, is it, it almost or not? I mean, it depends where you look at it. But I mean, it's you're putting the extra work into to 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 make the make the employment for yourself, you know, which is hard being mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur. But uh, the taxes are fucked up, man. They're gonna be getting a lot worse if um if the, if the old bag tax, if that old hag fucking gets staggered. And, yeah, really, dude. Yeah, for dude, it's crazy that the the, the 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 propaganda going. They're they're saying things exactly what they're planning on doing saying trump's gonna do much fuck it it's nuts it's crit it's nobody knows what to believe me included sometimes man wow. it's nuts but, but i'll tell you just the the uh tax i mean that the, the trump implemented uh the these this tax the tax breaks that are getting ready to expire man uh, if they if they do that's gonna get gonna get a lot more angry oh my god dude just kick the kick the laptop off it's there. almost like you just i remember i'm trying to think back when i was like pretty broke not long ago when like pretty when was your first time you you filed uh i mean i've been filing for a while oh. <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> is that a is that like a new thing it is. i'm 34 what <laughs> yes but, so it was the first time you filed like but, it's like well last year was my first time dude it's it's, it's not that it's not that un, unusual that people file in the late 20s for the first time really especially being fighters are honestly. you serious absolutely i Just, think that's pretty unusual it, it, no it, it is for you guys want to put me into a box they want to back me into a fucking court you want to make me feel stupid yeah so, so i got in tax trouble because i didn't file oh my god <laughs> if you want to beat it out of me that's fine Go figure. Want to break me down? I want to hear some good stories about the tax people just coming after you. You, would you, you want my life? That's they've. I've been audited every year. I've never filed taxes, <laughs> but two years. Well, put this that mic towards two. your mouth and then <laughs> let's get into it here. <laughs> no, but for real, uh, I, there was I, one point you were making some fucking good bread, and yeah. you had your house paid off, and they came and knocked at your door, kicked the door in. No, they didn't do that. Yeah, and 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 I was. Somewhat of an ostrich, I would put my. It's, I would. I got the letters from the IRS. I and if you don't file, and if you don't file for three years, they can file for you, with none of your write offs. So, you um, you know, the, I'm making four or five hundred thousand a year with with, and then they're they're filing with with no write offs, and then so then, they I if. if Anybody. So they file for you, and then years later they come back and say, "Hey, this is yeah. how much you yeah. owe." Yeah, so so it was in, in two thousand eight or something. They they took my home, and then I, I worked hard, and paid off, and then. They kicked but me. when you found out, like, mm-hmm. was it a letter at first, or they came? Oh, the, yeah, th- there was there was letters, calls, and I was just a fucking and idiot. Just, and I yeah, just just didn't we'll get to that later. Lisa, Lisa's, and this is before Lisa handled all this stuff. So what's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. And and uh, yeah, but so so then then you, you're 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 marked, for, I guess, for life. But so now they're always keeping an eye on you. Yeah. So I got, they won't they won't they won't touch me for five years and then they'll uh, audit me and go back five years. And then, oh. and, and I, and, and the, the last time was two years ago. Um, they went back and they, uh, I'm like, I was fucking clean. They had nothing. But then I would, I would I'd make bad habits of, you know, making a like $50,000 withdrawal and taking 20 out and, and shop with it and put it back in. How did you break it to Lisa? Like, Hey, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, they came in the house. Oh they came God. in the house and 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 uh, just mar- pretty much marking up what they were gonna sell. What, I mean, uh, things in my home. And, and you're uh, just sitting on the couch eating a muffin, yelling at them. <laughs> yelling, yeah, yeah, I was screaming at the wall. I was, there was no one to blame but myself. I was oh. threatening, threatening to batter the house. And and then uh, they 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 didn't just say they didn't kick us out right then. But they, they we we had uh, you know we had I think two weeks and then. Gave me, left me with one of my vehicles. Oh, bro. I bet that was a fucking hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, Cause you speak, I mean, you look at your account, you're like, yeah, I'm doing good, doing pretty good. Getting the yeah. house. Like you feel like you're pretty setting yourself up. Yeah. And then like, that. and then boom, bam. And, and then and it happens again. And then your, your wife looks at you with disgust. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. you, have you ever had any friends that you know of that went through something similar? No, no that, that's I'm, I'm squawking from the rooftops about taxes, especially with fighters. Mm-hmm. And because I didn't have anybody to help me, you know, to, to guide me through that stuff. I just, yeah, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody that made money like that. And then, and it's like, not like your parents are going to teach you. No, fuck no, no, absolutely not. And then, and it's, it's, and different. they don't really teach you in high school. I don't remember no. learning about taxes, well, how to file, what a W2, what a 1099 is. I never learned about any of that. Well, they stuck me in these retard classes that were fucking pretty, pretty cutting edge. Let me tell you. Uh-huh. They and you started, that, <laughs> no, they didn't teach me a goddamn thing, but I was, I was in, in retard those, classes. I was too. <laughs> Senior year. Oh, did I tell you the most? I told you what happened in one, right? When, what? when that, when uh, the girl I asked to to prom, 
you know, they just chewing on her tongue. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, not you, funny. You, you That's not, sensitive mother. It was <laughs> my, uh, well, it, shake it off. Just, uh, okay, okay. But, but so I was, I, I kept it pretty, pretty secret. It's a big school that I was in these classes, you know, people. And you're uh, a big hoss, you're state champion wrestler. Yeah, so you're kind of an athlete. Yeah. As I was. But so the girl I asked the prom, she back then, it's, it's like, 2000 uh -huh. they would uh like a student would give a give a note to a teacher like that's what they would you know, pass the notes and then uh she just came in saw me doing a paper mache project with fucking edgar with cerebral palsy and i uh, couldn't shake that off she looked at me i she just said, I'm volunteering. <laughs> yeah. She knew I was, oh, and Edgar kept pecking. Not now, Edgar. <laughs> it's, it's fucking bad. It couldn't, I couldn't come back from that. Uh, so I, I t <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I'm trying to think, though. Fucking Even Edgar. when you were, well, it's probably different because you had kids. But if you didn't have kids, it's not like your happiness really changes at no. all when you have more money. But back then, you don't, I don't think that, I mean, I think, I think money is everything, you know, and, and that's the only thing. Uh -huh. You know, being poor because being I'm growing up poor, mm -hmm. and then um, so you think that's happiness. So, yeah, and they fucking literally took everything. But gave me the only car they left me was uh, Lisa's Ford Focus that I paid off before we got married. And that, oh, like and an you're old buzzing around. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, dude. So even in high school and stuff, what would you do for your lunch money and shit? Oh fuck, I didn't. I, I did. <laughs> my dad would give me like ten bucks for the week. <laughs> and then, uh, and but that was for dinner too. And, <laughs> and so, and usually that would go for for beer or something. I'd, I'd usually get fucking drunk. Which is just, yeah, I always, I would always just fucking. Dude, I'd go, I'd go to, I'd go to wrestling practice like for state, just just drunk as fuck. Really? Yeah. And, oh shit. And uh, and not not in shape, and I shouldn't have have been as decorated of an athlete as I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But my sheer athleticism just killed me. I wish we had some. Uh, what's your question, Nick? Did you have a fake or how'd you get the beers? Oh, oh, fuck. I, I had this. Oh, God dang it. You went <laughs> down that one. So I had this, this guy named Jimmy. He uh, he wasn't homeless. He, he lived in the trailers by, by Cactus High School. And so I just go up and I would, uh, and I would, I would, I would, I would hey, buy Hey, Jimmy, him. you want me to jack you again for some beer? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I offered because he, he, uh, you could tell he was, uh, he was a man that enjoyed the spirits himself. So I bought him, you know, some, some, some booze and he, uh, and he bought me booze. But then my mind started working <laughs> and I wanted to drink with him. And, and he and started dressing up in skirts. <laughs> <laughs> Put me out. <laughs> he said, I'll, I'll get to one, I'll get to one story before you just okay, fucking okay, go off on a bender here. <laughs> okay, so, so Jimmy, Jimmy was a drunk. We'll just get this cut out. And so, I was drinking with him. We were filming him because he was he was real racist and just out, did just crazy, say crazy things. So we put a little bit of Everclear in his in his, in his forty. So I started getting real drunk, uh -huh. and then so he he passed out, falling around. So we just we put him to bed. And me and a couple of friends. The next day we because we left some alcohol there. We were gonna go get it. It's a hundred and something degrees out in Arizona. It's fucking hot. He's sitting on his on his driveway. Drinking with no shirt, drinking. We so we just sat and watched him drink for thirty minutes. He he stood straight up, face first, knocked every every tooth, every tooth out he had, in his, every tooth he had left in his head, and then Put some I, ever clear in his forty. <laughs> this is the next day. He just started, went outside polishing off himself. This is a new day for him. Oh, and then fuck. so he, that we were like thirty yards away. I, I laughed for for a second. He starts to drag his legs back up, up to his room, up to his house. And I felt bad to this day because I filmed it. It's, it <laughs> but the, but the, it's fucking. Dish. I wish we had some pictures. I we probably you I probably, have a lot of pictures. You probably have some old pictures from high school that Nick can throw on the screen. Uh, Diesel was a big hoss. What was your highest you weighed <clears throat> in high school or, or ever? Three hundred, three ten. Three ten. That mm -hmm. scale was on. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! And I'd I, love to see in a day in the life in Joe when you were three ten. And do you think I had no dude? Confidence was fucking high. I was a peacock. Well, I mean, you you weren't just you were no, no, a, no. A, a stout dude. Yeah, but but I had a ripping gut and fucking I wouldn't give a shit. Fucking, just a hard gut. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Um, like, you know those hard guts. Yeah, like a, that, that's an like a, that's a alcoholic gut. Okay, yeah. All right, we'll move, we'll move in on move on here and uh, some. I'm trying to say I was now called <laughs> Twitter questions. Twitter questions. We have tons here. If you had to build an MMA Olympic team for the USA with males from each division, which American fighters would you choose from each division, and why? Well, that would be hard because it's like, okay, what are the rounds going to be, and is it in a tournament? 
So do you have to fight three times or you have to duel other countries? I mean, I don't know if that because then, then you'd have to take in durability. Who's going to be durable enough to fight mul hard. multiple times? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to. I mean, can, probably American wise at 155. Justin Gaethje. That's good. But he's durable as fuck. He's durable. He's going to show up for every fight. American at 170. I mean, Kamaru. No. Do you, do you think he's super durable? Or. Because Kamara was born in America, I'm pretty sure, yeah. right? I don't fucking know. What he I'm might, he might be, he might not be, he might not be. So who's another American at 170? That would be a good one for. I was her. fucking Rob, Robbie, Robbie Lawler mm -hmm. back in the day. Fuck yeah, uh, 185, 185. Who's it? Sean Strickland? Yeah, he'll be there. He'll be there 100. <laughs> 205. 205. I fucking. You just keep naming off old school fighters. You, Joe Dirksen. <laughs> <laughs> I was close to saying that in the middle weight. Yeah. Tim Sylvia. <laughs> Heavyweight. Oh, fucking, uh, yeah, fucking that's awesome. a hard one. I'd have to really look at the things, but that would be fucking sick to have. This, this is causing me problems over here. I've been talking this for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, what are you doing if you're with Sean, Diesel, and yourself, and you find yourself in a situation where you're downtown and three guys want to fight, so it's 3v3? Probably yeah. avoid it. Probably avoid the fight. I mean, there's really no reason that we need to smash anybody's face. Yeah. So what avoid it. What if it's unavoidable is what he's saying. We'd probably, I mean, Get loose. I would be more worried about you killing somebody. I, I can, because yeah. I've seen your eyes when they black out and they're scary. So I try to avoid you from blacking out. Maybe let's just have a, a fun, Calm, nice. fun time with them. Yeah. Maybe. It's something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the it's the uh, thing, the crazy shit that can happen, man. Someone hitting their head and you get knocked out. That's always or scary. it's like this just happened. This just happened to uh, one of my students' sister's boyfriend. The guy's like thirty. I don't know how old he is, but he's at work. His employee, while he's at work, gets in a confrontation with someone else. He chips in, says something. The guy go gets gun, comes back, shoots him. Oh, I see, you don't know, you don't know what people are dealing with at home, and make people just fucking lose it like that. That's the thing. You you make you make a fool of someone so bad, and they're That's it. and they're way down in the dumps. Maybe something happened bad to them. They have a pistol at home, and they're like, "Fuck this motherfucker." That's it. The story with Leandro Lowe is one of the worst at the What's club. That? He fucked some guy up. Some guy was getting lippy at the club. He tuned him up. The guy left, grabbed a gun, came back to the table, boom, put one on his head. Oh, man. If you disrespect a man on a fundamental level, special in front of his friends or family, that's, that's a dangerous thing, man. It is. It really is. Imagine if someone just shames you in front of your wife and kids just, <clears throat> and you're laying there, oh, God. <laughs> you go yeah. Your wife verbally There's... abuses you. I mean, it, yeah, that, I could see myself fucking retaliating. I mean, not shooting somebody, but yeah. But closed, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Tim, any tips on quitting the hardest addiction of all time? Soda and fast food. Struggling with it right now? Fuck, it's hard with fast food, dude. You can go in and out. You can get, you can feed the whole family for 24 bucks. It can 25 you? bucks. Hold on, pump the brakes here. You can. It's getting really, really spendy with those fast foods things. Trust me, I have, uh, I have a family, and, and it's... Uh, you go there for family five. You'll drop seventy bucks, seventy seventy dollars at a fucking fast food place. Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's well, comfortable. Are you getting large milkshakes? Whatever the kids want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just something. I mean, it's 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 uh it's uh, you or you have you found it hard to stop eating fast food? No, this is this kid. This kid asks asking. He's like, any tips on quitting the soda one? It's like there's so many different sodas that are pretty good. I mean, the Spade, the Spade's really good. They don't have a bunch of calories. They don't have a bunch of high fructose corn syrup that's just going straight into your gut. Your gut doesn't even know what to do with it. It spikes your blood sugar so fucking high. And then when that drops, you're just craving another one. Then it spikes it again. But if you can force yourself for a week, two weeks, three weeks to try to eat clean, try to stabilize your blood sugar, you won't have those cravings as much. You just fucking won't. And then fast food. The fast food one's so tough because... Full meal, easy. you get a Whopper Junior meal for what? Six, seven bucks? It's changing. <laughs> like I said, it's changing. Eight ninety nine. <laughs> Footway, <Yeah>. I mean, <sighs> foot long sub. You can go to Ch Chick McFlea or uh, what's that place called? Chick-fil-A? Chick McFlea. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Chick I've still never been there. Is it pretty good? I don't like it. 
Oh, you don't? No. You're not big on those chicken fried sandwiches? No, no, I'm not. <clears throat> if I, you do go to fast food, what's yours? Oh, I like Taco Bell. I can wrap, wrap Beefy wrap, five layer bud? Wrap my tits around. I'm a basic man. I like to just get. I'm a, I'm a slob at heart. You just get burritos and just bury my tits in those. <laughs> or when you're feeling a little spendy, treat yourself to a Crunchwrap <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> No, if I'm really, if I'm, yeah, if I'm feeling like a little treat, crunch up supreme. But I used to go uh, bean and cheese burrito, hard shell taco. Oh. Because I used to, I mean, my dad would come home from work. He'd go to bed. He'd throw his extra, it went, threw his extra pants and extra room. So I'd go in, in there and try to grab some quarters. Usually I'd, I could find eight quarters, sometimes, sometimes 12 quarters. And then I'd treat myself to a little T-Bell too. T-Bell, god damn it. Get it hits going, the spot, it dude. Does. It really does. Get but goddamn it, we're trying to help him stop. We're not talking about how fucking good it is. <laughs> Pub, yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, dude, I mean, especially I'm, when you're around your family, you're around your friends, and that's all they do. That's all they know. They oh, don't yeah. They don't even fuck, think yeah. eating healthy, and if they, if you do eat healthy, like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, who, that like, who is he Who is he surrounding himself with? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, ask himself that. Mm -hmm. You know, because if, if it's, if your family's doing it, I mean, it's, that's a hard thing. It's, if, you're, if you're, on a certain income and you're, and you're bringing that shit food in and you're going out there, I mean, it's hard, but if you want to do it, you can do it. I mean, for me, for me, I have Mariah, I have Mariah but if I didn't have Mariah, I still would eat healthy, but it just would be simple shit. It would just be eggs and fucking turkey and like just throw on some ground meat, God, put a little really seasoning on there. It's not, I mean. Even the, even the stuff at fast food, there's, there's, if you're, if you're to go to in, uh, in and out, you can get the, uh, the protein style, you know, you can, there's things you, there's, 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 what's that? What's, what are you doing? No, no. Uh, I thought it was, it was a signal. Okay. But yeah, there, there's, because I, I still get that. The, the double, double protein style. Mm -hmm. And They're, it's good. You yeah. got me on the crock pots, the crock pot roasts. Those are good. Yeah, Cause yeah. Those, those, you did on Patreon a while back. Those can last you. The, those can last you a while. Yeah. It's fucking tough, dude. Cause you go, you go into any of these stores and it looks like just everyone is so fatter and fuck, just <laughs> sicker and sicker than shit. And go in those fast food places and look around who's sitting around and look how healthy they look. It's true. Fucking sucks. That's just so goddamn hard to eat healthy, but it's really not. If you can just get in the habit of doing it and you're interested in it and you YouTube videos, you can go to YouTube, how to eat clean on a budget. You can buy oatmeal, you can buy chicken breast, you can do, do all, there's ways to do it, but you have to be interested in it and just look for it. I mean, Google it, YouTube it, find different books. When I first found out about eating healthy, I, I read the three weeks to shredded by Mike Dolce. Remember that? Yeah. It was Tiago Alves. Tiago Alves was cutting from 193 to 170 and I was a 170 at the time. So I followed his diet three weeks out. He was 193, followed what he ate every day. And I know he, he he's came out with a new book too, that's more nutritious and have you feeling better. But does it, does, is he knowledgeable or no? Oh fuck yeah! Is he? Yeah, he's a nice guy. I've met. I, I, I never really. Um. Okay. What happened with Tommy? Heard you guys talking crypto on the last pod. Hit me up anytime, and I can help you guys figure it out. Tommy fucked his shoulder up. Okay, he fucked it up, and we we're trying to get him on week eight or week nine, but it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, so I don't think we'll be able to be back to training. And he's pretty down in the dumps. The kid he was supposed to fight last night fought and won the contract, so he's just like beating Fuck. himself up even more. I mean, the kid looked kid looked good. He came out, put the pace on. It would I just still truly believe in my heart it would have been a good match for Tommy. But maybe we'll see that fight in the UFC. Maybe that's a fight Tommy gets short notice because when the UFC has all all your medicals, all your everything done, yes, you're right. you're one of the first on the list for short notice fights. So, I mean, that kind of uh, shit happens. So, felt what do they say? What do they say with uh, the imaging? Uh, I'll I'll show you right here. It's um, it's a. Uh, Grade two AC separation, two to three muscle strains in the area, a labral tear in the upper part of the labrum. Going to be a little time off, but good news is most two type two separations don't look, require surgery. Um, so it's just going to be. That sucks, man. Sucks, but it's part of it. Yeah. There, just like I was talking about on the confidential, there's levels of suck. The number, the worst suck in life, I think, would be your child dying. Yep. Or your whole family got in a head-on head collision. Fuck, yeah. 
Um, so that's probably worse suck. So I always try to compare things when something sucks, something bad happens. I compare it to that. How bad is it? Absolutely. Put things into perspective really fast like that. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, okay, it could always be worse. Um, oh yeah. Back to, back to beer runs. I used to do some, uh, I used to do a couple beer runs back in the day. I did How'd a couple beer, beer runs. Well, we pulled up in the suburban. We were heading great falls to Helena. We pulled up in the suburban into Wolf Creek and I went in there. I love that place. Grabbed a 12-pack and ran out. Made it to the Suburban. <laughs> we had that 12-pack of Bush Light. We're sipping it. And I'm feeling like, the man, I did it for the boys. And we're all sipping. You got and then <laughs> the next week, my friend did it. And I wasn't with him. And then the cop said, hey, I want to know. I know you know who did it the week before. And he narked He rolled on over me. on you. Yep. Motherfucker. And then I was in my, in my dorm at this time. Because we moved into the dorms when he found out. And then uh, they called me up and I called him back. I said, I did it. I fucking did it. Oh, man. And I've never done anything like that before. And I was just hyped up with my boys. And I just admitted it. And I just got yeah, They were cool with it? They were cool. Dude, it's the, if anybody went to, if anybody knows, went to Cactus, Cactus High School was around here. This is before I, I got, got a hold of that bum, uh -huh. Jimmy. And, uh, and uh, which, which he was a great source of entertainment. He's a good guy. But um, this is uh, the, the one beer I did. I, I, because I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even call it a beer, and I would just put money down. But a guy, guy was was uh, was stocking things on the side. I didn't see him. He grabbed me, and I cracked him with the right <laughs> with the right hook. And my dad pulled up just as I was puttering off in my jeep, and uh, and my my dad ended up end up lying for me. Thank God. <laughs> but yeah, oh dude, God. the guy goes, "You hold on a second, huh?" And fuck, and it was just 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 reaction, bang. And he was an old fucking man. And my just dad, being a Little shithead. Yeah, it was, I feel I, that's something I feel bad for to this day. Oh, I, I feel horrible. He was like six years old. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh -huh. it's fucked up, man. I went, I went back. I went. Back. It's fucked, man. His name was Ibn Colden Boss, man. He was, he was. Oh, mm. fucking! It was. It, I caught him right in the puss. Oh God. And I mean, he. It's because I put the money up on the counter and started. And I, I'm not a. I'm not a dick. I'm not a bastard. I mean, back then. Yeah. No, I was. I was. I. I. I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm the same kind of guy. I guess I ran a little bit hot, but still, to this day, like, someone turns you around, you hold on a second. <clears throat> Think. Okay. Tuporia versus Max Holloway, path to victory. I mean, you watch Tuporia. I watched Tuporia versus Bryce. Uh, Bryce Mitchell again, and he's so he's so fucking good. His shoulders are so high. He's so good at coming close. If you throw a punch. And you're not bringing it back to your face. He's so good at counter punching you. Boom, boom, boom. But there is fucking. I mean, he he's pretty flat footed and he's pretty stationary, and he is he's not the tallest guy. I would be zero percent surprised if Max Holloway came out, found his range, got started first, made Taporia miss a lot, and Max got it done. After after watching that, I'm like, fuck. There's just. You think so? You There's think he... ways for Max to win. There is. It's just not like he's untouchable. And even on Toporia, it's not like Bryce Mitchell's, I mean, it's not like Bryce Mitchell's got the best distance and footwork. And even with him, he was whiffing his punches, throwing his punches and he, really hard. And he was way off balance a few times. So, I mean, that's where I see if the fight. Who's the, who's fight, the favorite in that fight? I'm sure it's going to be Toporia. I would, I, if you, I could, if you could pick one, if, which one would you rather fight with Sean? To, Toporio after after seeing that really I just think it's a people are like well oh, you fucking idiot I'm like I, it's a winnable fight I just truly do believe it is I'm never I'm never never betting on Max again I'm betting, betting against him. I made a fool out of myself right you can't ever can't ever bet you can't go against that guy mm -hmm. how do you Sean anyone else in the crew deal with loneliness have you guys ever been at points in your life where you felt you haven't had anywhere anyone to go to. I mean, fuck. I enjoy being alone just because I have so much shit to think about. So much shit to think about, ideas to do. I, I'm always busy, and I do have a good group of friends. But, dude, I've said it before. I mean, get yourself into a, a, some sort of community, like a jiu-jitsu community. Go there, and you're not going to make friends the first month, maybe. Maybe the first two months. But eventually, you'll start getting to know these guys and being around other guys that are trying to up, like, going a good direction in their life, trying to get better at something. But if you just stay at home, get bored, get lonely, and just jack that little wiener again, and then jack it again, you're just going to put yourself more in a fucking hole. That fucking root will cause you a lot of problems. And it, then if you, it will. 
And then if, if you're not porn. fucking working out at all, you're not putting yourself through any tough shit. Every day, if you don't do anything tough every single day, you're going to just create problems for yourself. Absolutely. And then that's where out of nowhere, God, I should have so much anxiety. And you should it, have another Jack. It, 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 it's, 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 I struggle with loneliness. I do. I, I, and, and it's, and it's not that I don't have people to call. I don't like to call and burden people per se, and, or, or it's something I've always struggled with. I, I, I don't, I, I hate being alone. I always have. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's stems from my childhood, of course, but a, 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 joining a jiu-jitsu gym or anything any, where some sort of car, uh, camaraderie forcing yourself to go that is so so important yes i fucking think so dude so um i'd say that okay here's uh monty realtor az thoughts on starting jiu-jitsu at 42 year olds what to do what not to do i'd go in there go in there and do it talk to the instructor tell him say hey i just want to learn jiu-jitsu i want to get in shape i don't want to compete i don't want to fucking be a world beater I want to come learn jujitsu and exercise and, and have this be my form of exercise. Hopefully, in most black belts in jujitsu, they're gonna be they're gonna take care of you. They're gonna put you with people who roll at your level. For and, sure. Uh, don't fuck you up because I mean, it, it, communication is key when you're that you you don't have you don't want to be a world be you don't want to be a world champion. Just telling people not going there with all these tough, tough guys and just tell you you're there to learn. I think That's, being open and communicating is very very important. Yes, and, and pe some people think you need to go into a fight gym and prove yourself. Like, it's prison. You need to stand up to everybody and scrap hard with yeah. everybody and show them how tough you are. It's like, that's just not the that's not the way to go about coming into a gym, especially if you're older. Yeah, you just Come in there humble that, and just tell, sure. tell them what's going on. I Being think humble should, in every situation is better. 100% I'd start at 42. Fuck yeah. Thoughts on evolution for striking for MMA. Example, non-traditional striking. Not Muay Thai or boxing, but MMA based striking. Do you see more fighters adapting their stance and stri striking strictly for MMA? It's getting overcomplicated as it is now. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, you don't see guys coming in there. I mean, you do Cleo Roundtree, he pretty much stands there in a Muay Thai stance. Who else? Ilya Topuria. He's in a boxing stance. His feet are really wide. His body's really sideways. His hands are up tight. He is in a boxing stance. But for most people, yeah, there's more of a there's more of a MMA type stance. You're you're more on the balls of your feet. You're ready to back up fast. You're ready to sprawl if you need to. You're ready to check a kick. Muay Thai, most of your weight's sitting there on your back foot, but probably seventy percent on your back foot. And yeah, you're sitting for there sure. Tapping that front leg. That makes it easy for people to take you down. So there definitely is an MMA type stance, and it definitely is adapting. Do you think? Do you think people are trying to emulate guys like Sean when they? So there's 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 certain fighters that can do things. You know, certain fighters that can't. Everybody, everybody isn't isn't the same. Every I don't think everybody should be switching their stances, doing these fancy stuff. I think people forget running running good basic combinations done the right way take you a long way too. You know. Yeah, and and then if you got someone. Who spent a lot of their time? They're they're an excellent boxer. Their footwork's really good. And then you got someone who's not. I mean, th they haven't been striking long. Maybe they have good grappling, whatever. And they're switching their stances all the time. They're squaring up their feet, and they're not bringing their hands right back to their chin, or they're not rolling under correctly. That boxer is going to find spots to light you the fuck up well, when you're yeah. switching your feet. And you Absolutely. see it all the time. Yep. I mean, you've been big on that too. Your southpaw, and you mm -hmm. stand in a southpaw stance. Most of the best strikers in the world, I, I do think Sean's Sean's different. Mm -hmm. He's different. But percent. most of the best strikers in the world, they stand there in one stance. Yeah, they, I mean, it, it, there's again, there's people that can do it. There's people that can't. I mean, it, and when people get get caught, is when people capitalize that when they do switch because people people's footwork isn't the same as their. Is their is their dominant stance? You know, it's like uh, I'm a southpaw, right handed southpaw. When I switch my right my right hand's there, it's better. It's my it's my power hand, but I'm stumbling around like a drunk. My footwork's horrible when I switch. And obviously, there's people that aren't, but you know, I, I think people need to, you know, make sure. I think I, don't, I see people are doing too much watching people. They 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 can't emulate. Yeah. And then you go into that opposite stance, and then you really try to throw a punch. Now your balance is off. When your balance is off, that's your time to get dropped. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Um, how long do you think Marab's beak is? <laughs> uh, four inches, probably realistically four inches. And it's wide, isn't it? Garrett sent me a photo the other day. He had it look like I had a pepperoni nipple on his arm. 
<laughs> what? With what? a hole in it, so that could have been a staff. He's just rotting away at the scene, isn't he? Then he's down in Tijuana, Mexico, trying to seem like he's going down there for boxing. It's like, we, we know there's 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 a reason you go to Tijuana. And it's to get stem cells. You're probably getting NAD, IV. He's, he's, he's You're, having at all the local whores, you know it. I can almost goddamn 100% guarantee he's at Hong Kong. What's that? You know what Hong Kong is? No. What, Hong what? Kong is a, one of the biggest whorehouses, I think, ever. Have you been there? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I've heard about it. I just, just jacking out front. That's <laughs> yeah. But Hong Kong, you go in there. And Hong fuck Kong, up. huh? Mm -hmm. Hong Kong, Tijuana, Mexico. And uh, a kid recently messaged Suge and said, I got a picture of Mrab in Hong Kong. So he's there <laughs> fucking spreading around shit, getting shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. So. He's a disease carrying pigeon down there. Yes, he is. Sorry about that. He's trying to find a new baby mama for another cat. Yes. Nice. Yes, he is. That went over my head. Well, he's got a, he's got split custody with a cat. Yes. A guy, a guy messaged me on Instagram saying he goes over the stripper's house and pumps on her. And, <laughs> and Marab was there carrying his cat out in this little <laughs> basket. Shut the. F and that's real. Oh, I'd bury him. Um, oh, after man. watching Bashi's performance last night, how quick does Tommy sleep him? I mean, fuck, it's just so hard to say. You never know. You can't just pick. That kid looked you know, good? He looked good, but like stylistically, I think Tommy would have gave him a That's lot right. of fucking trouble. I, I, tru I truly think that. But like I said, you never know. The kid looked good, 22 years years old, and uh, he, he's gonna, probably going to be in the UFC for a long time. So I'm excited to watch him. Did he look better than what his films did? Exact same. No shit. Exact same. Yeah, but like I said, twenty-two. You don't fucking start stop growing. I swear, when you're a male, until what age? I stopped in eighth grade. <laughs> no, you didn't. I swear to God, I was this tall. Well, I was tall. I have strength. Yeah. I didn't st really start filling out, filling out till twenty-five, twenty-six. I feel like. But yeah. Not a book. Thoughts on leaving in old environments. People partying, drinking, gossiping when you have a vision to be different than everything you, you've known, but it involves a period of solitude in between phases where you was and where you want to be. I mean, what, you got to do it. What, what is he asking? Thoughts on leaving old environments, people partying, drinking, gossiping. I mean, when you're fresh out of college too and you're, you got a good group of friends in college and, or even high school and that's the fun thing to do. Just get fucked up. Head to the bars. Get fucked up. It's just you get caught in that. That, that monotonous fucking cycle. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, I mean, it's just like anything else. You go through that struggle and you're going to where, get to where you want to be. Yeah. What was your initial thoughts on Tommy McMillan having to miss this chance? And what are some ways to prevent something like that happening? As we have no information, to be honest, on his injury, uh, dude, you just got to remind yourself when you're seven days out, you are so depleted in calories. Your mind is fucking strong though. And you're in shape. Maybe you're feeling good. You want to come in. You want to push the pace a little bit. He came into practice. I wanted him to kind of flow roll. He wanted to go live. So I put him with a group. I'm like pretty safe group. We're doing four man groups and I'm not sitting there watching because I'm in another four man group myself, which... I could take blame for. No. I should have been watching and no. just been like, dude, just. And then got Matt returned onto his shoulders. Just a fucking freak thing. A There's stupid nothing you thing. can do about things like that. I mean, I mean yeah. things. It's could, just going to happen. Fuck yeah, absolutely. There's nothing you can do about it. It could be a lot worse and it could be for, it could be, could, it could be better. Yeah. You know? Honestly. I mean, you got to look at it that way. You have to. That's a shitty, shitty thing. It's got to be killing Tommy. You can't take that blame yourself. Not even close. You, that's what anybody would have done. There's things I could have done. I mean, I mean, I'm, but now I'm going to just stand strong. I'm like, no, hey, no, no. All the hard work's done. Seven day, 10 days out, seven days out, 12, you're not going to get in any better shape. Yeah. And some, and some people, some people you can talk to like that. Some people listen, take some people just yeah. won't do it. They have to have that. You know? Like Benson, he'll fucking be going live all week, like in the yeah. gi. Yeah. He'll be doing it. You can't, you can't tell Benson. I mean, he, he's not, not disrespectful he just he's a man and he's been doing it a long time he has a certain way of doing things yeah yeah so definitely learning lesson there Mrab can't make it to the fight peter yawn steps in in short notice how does preparation change and, and do you think sugar sleeping yawn would be more impressive than Mrab? yeah i mean who's slept peter yawn no one no one's 
I mean, no one's battered his face as much as Sean. But, I mean, short notice, Peter Jan versus Suge, and Suge's in this kind of shape. I mean. Doesn't matter. Sean would fuck him up right now because he's in such goddamn good shape right now. That, that's what that's where it is when it, when it, when you're when you're training to the point where it doesn't matter who the opponent is. Okay, what's most important about life? Hit it, Joe. What's what's most important about life? Yeah, fucking having a balance of everything, just being getting the, the least stress you have. I mean, it's just just fucking being fucking happy, man. It's not money, just having everything balanced. Yeah, I think fucking having good relationships with the people around you, with your partner, trying to have good relationships with your parents, trying to just have good relationships with people, and then keeping yourself healthy. Sleeping, no matter where you're at, even if you're in a shitty spot, if you just have some good fucking healthy habits, if you can dial in your sleep, be hydrated, eat good food, and work out, your life is going to be so much fucking different. It will. And, and you it- learn to communicate with people. And have good relationships. That's I, I mean, that's the only thing I know. I think that's that's the, the one thing that that works. And it, you get to get the people that are just negative out out of your life and don't be a victim. Just keep pushing through no matter what happens. That's you're gonna you're gonna be successful for sure. If you could replicate a sugar hairstyle, what would be your style, Tim? I mean, I got too big of a forehead. <laughs> I got too big of a forehead to do anything cool. I go into my bar. I'm like, hmm, let's do something. Kind of, with red, not, red hair, what can you really do with this? Well, it's not just the red hair. <laughs> Look at Garrett. Oh, fucking shot to the lips. Me with Garrett's hair. <laughs> it, it is the head. It is the head. I, I'm I'm pigeonholed to a to a to a certain hair to a certain hairstyle. Unless I just you could do it. a little something. You know I can't. It may be a little part down the middle. <laughs> a little Dennis the Menace. Could you grow long hair if you tried? Me or no, Tim? Tim? Ah, bro. If you like really like dedicated to it next three years, could you do it? I just don't think so. It what would, would it like, take? Grow like an afro or what? It would probably grow like yours. Really? Yeah. What about you, Riggs? Have you ever done that before? Yeah, when I when I was a buck, I had long hair. Really? <laughs> you have any pics of that? <laughs> God damn. That yeah, of course. With a rat tail, and then I, I have the whole nine yards. What's your favorite fart? Uh, what's your favorite part <laughs> about fight week? Favorite part about fight week is that the fight camp is fucking over with. The fight camp's over with. Least favorite. Is watching my boys or whoever it is go through that weight cut because that thing is fucking brutal. Going through that goddamn weight cut, dude. Having to lose 10, 12 pounds and you're eight hours from weigh-ins. You're t- t- maybe 12 hours from weigh-ins and you see the little jump on that scale and be like, I have to pull 10 to 12 pounds of water out of my body when I'm already pretty depleted. Oh. And I don't have a lot of calories. You're not on, you don't have a lot of carbs. You still got to work out. Still got to do this shit. So that's probably the the hardest part, least favorite part for sure. And uh, I'd imagine breaking the routine is tough. Not really. I mean, it, it is breaking the routine. It sucks, but it's like, like routine here. Yeah, but we're going we're going there for a job, a mission. It's like we're going there for work. So it's not that bad. Have you guys got any inside info on what the graphics and the sphere are going to be yet? I'm sure it's going to be something f- fucking crazy. I I mean, but the main thing that makes me feel good about it is just. The brighter lights, the more hectic everything is, just some for some reason, the more calm Sean gets. Fuck, dude. He gets just so much more calm. So everyone on that card doesn't know what to expect. Everyone on that card is doesn't know. I mean, they're going to have to deal with it. So I have zero idea what to expect. I have zero fucking idea, really. So, sorry for this one. Can see it as a shitty question. What are your thoughts on CTE, mainly from fighters' point of view, and some worries, if any, any about if it ever crossed your mind before, but also coaching at a high level, and it, if it's even a discussion in training camp for sure. I mean, it's changed so much even since I've been in Arizona. We used to spar so fucking hard, dude. I'd be at six days out from a fight, and I'm. 175 pounds and i have to make 155 in six days sparring three rounds hard benson being my first round brian barbarina being my second round and then benson being my third round like and sparring hard like a fucking idiot and then sparring just so much so much but there's 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 a lot you can learn from sparring too you get a lot of growth from sparring and going through these wars and you find out how gritty you are going through a lot of sparring but there's a balance to it you just I'm have still to be diligent, to man. Figuring to, it out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's there's no perfect 
perfect way. I mean, just like like myself, it's like I worry about you know CT. Like I just as recently, it's you, when you take those shots, you never you never come back from. You know, you're never gonna regain those brain cells. You're never gonna. It's that it sucks. It's the reality. But yeah, being more aware of your sparring or your guys sparring. You know, if they take a big shot, they're concussed, and they make sure they don't ever even think about sparring or even getting their heart rate up until. Um, you know, it's safe to, because that, that stuff, you know, creates post-concussive syndrome. It's not good. And, I mean, how many people, I mean, majority, majority of fighters get their confidence from sparring. Yeah. And, and sparring hard, sparring hard with good guys. Like, that's where you get your confidence. But, like I said, it's a fucking. You know, finding, making making sure you're sparring with the right guys is mm -hmm. very smart. Because there's some guys that just, you know, just pick it up and crack in the gym and go too hard, you know, kind of take cheap shots and people just the, find the right guys are just important is, is a uh, sparring period. Well, it's hard for certain styles too, like certain styles for, for people who like, for example, my friend, Sam Cecilia, he was in the UFC for a long time, yeah. uh, short orthodox. And he would, he would crack people and knock them out. He cracked people and knock them out. But in sparring, every person would fucking kind of beat him up, whoop his ass. But he's not cracking people like he cracks yeah. people in, in a real fight. So even someone like you, it's like if some kid's way slicker and you, way faster than you, boom. And your only way to slow him down is boom, boom, crack him just to slow him down. Yeah, it happens. Sure. So it's just, it's hard. It is. It, Different it definitely styles. Is hard. The art of sparring is fucking really it's hard. Never, it's never a perfect thing. Um, What's one new age fighter that Big Diesel would have wanted to have a dust up with? Oh, Maybe a 170 -er in the UFC right now. 170? Yes. Fuck, I don't know. I know, I'd have to look at it. Yeah. You know, be in your prime versus their prime, uh, maybe like a Jack Maddalena, who's an orthodox boxer, versus Joe Riggs, southpaw boxer. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, an opponent for, for the for the bare knuckle in November. Like a right, I, could, I, got, I can't just fight, just fight a, a bum. But stylistically, I want it to be a good fight. Exciting, you know. Coach, what's your daily beverage to pair with food? I like kombuchas. I like to do at least one kombucha a day. Here at the dojo here, I like to do a catalyte creatine. It's the thorn electrolyte with a scoop of creatine. Um, the thorn stuff with the aminos. You can do the aminos. You can do the magnesium. And they taste really good. And they're third-party tested. I'll put a link for 15% discount in the thing. You're still drinking the kombuchas? Every day. Do, you remember the ones that had the, like the seeds and all in them? Chia. What the fuck happened to those? I, I, I haven't seen those in a minute I've either. Been, I've been looking everywhere. I can't find them. Well, because I got you to try those, right? Yeah. And the first time you didn't, you hated it? Yeah, yeah. It was like the third or fourth. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. They're fucking good now. I can't find them. Tim, since Sean is tall and has long limbs, do you think Marab is underestimating that Sean has some legit jujitsu and could possibly win by sub? I mean, dude, if you if if people out there think his jujitsu's weak, and he's been training with Takino and me for ten years, I mean, and good grapplers, like they're fucking stupid. But I mean, maybe we'll find out. We'll find out. Is soon. that what people think? They think his jujitsu's his weakness, but no one's able to take him down, so it's yeah. hard to even see it. Did you uh, did you watch Mighty compete this weekend in the black belt? Oh yeah, yes. Oh yeah, I did. So that was. Mighty Mouse's black belt debut, Masters 2 division, IBGF Worlds, and it, he had a stacked bracket. He had Cachino from here in AZ in his bracket, and I was like, fuck, that's crazy. And I think he won three in a row, right? You got to go check out Mighty Mouse's vlog. It's a good vlog. Was uh, it that, that he had a grapple match with that Asian guy that was, was crying afterwards? It was that, was that this weekend? He beat weekend? him. Yep, he beat that guy that was last weekend, I believe. And uh, it's badass though. Mighty Mouse in the gi too. It's like goddamn. It's just you don't see any other MMA legends who are considered goats getting in the kimono and then going tr competing that at guy's, that guy's such badass the black belt man. level. The black belt level winning anything. The black belt level. The IBJJF is some serious fucking skills. So that was pretty badass. And I and the pod with uh, Mikey Musumeci. That was a good ass pod. I was listening to that. There's a lot of fucking good. Just two masters of the sport talking about their shit, and it was really good. When are we gonna see you compete again, Tim? Hopefully for December, the Master Worlds. I'll probably do the, uh, I'll probably do the heavyweight Masters One Black Belt Nogi Division. How that, long do you have to have plan. prepare for that? Um, probably six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks grappling, but still, I mean, I'm I'm still just grappling every day. So your 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 Achilles feels 100. percent Yeah. How yeah. much you weigh right now? I weigh probably 207. And you feel good at this weight. 
I feel like this is the weight I should be at. You don't, you feel just as fast as you do? You just, no. No? Slower. Stronger though? Feel strong. That's yeah, good. feel strong. Thing is, when you put on the, a lot of muscle and a lot of power, you got to be smart with when you use it. But, I mean, the Masters divisions at the World Championships, I mean, there's six minutes, I believe. So there's six minutes compared to ten, so that's quite a bit different. That's huge. Adult division is ten-minute matches, so is you it, have to be real smart. How many people use it in the, your brackets? Probably for the Masters, one heavyweight would be, I bet there'd be 13, 14 guys. When was the last one you competed in? 2020. One, 2021 uh, Worlds, and then 2020 Pan Ams, but I did that one at adult black belt. Did you really? And who, how far? Did you, how many matches did you get in that? In the Pan Ams, I went against Pedro Hocha, who he's the reigning absolute champion, adult absolute champion. So that's all weights, mm -hmm. and the heavyweight champion at black belt. So he, I had him first round, and we had a good match. I was up on him 2-0 with one minute left. Really. And then he ended up taking my back and beating me four to two. No shit. What would you have done if you had won that? I would have probably, who would I got in the finals? I would have probably got this Andrew Wiltsey in the finals and he's fucking good. He's so good. So I don't know. I wouldn't huh. have done shit. That wouldn't, that, would, that wouldn't change you no. competing in nothing at all? No. I mean, that's a, that's beating him would be a fucking big win. And then the last worlds I beat this guy. A Lovato black belt. I beat him in the first round, and in the second round, I lost, lost ref's decision. Let's think about those fucking things, dude. So you get ref's decisions. So then the ref decides. And, and what's the criteria? What do they? They decide on kind of who was more active, who was doing more, and it's like it's just such a flip of the coin. And sometimes people call them out for being biased, and I believe they can be fucking biased sometimes. It's I've up seen. to the ref to decide. And if you got a, a Brazilian kid who's hits all the tournaments you've and then some, you got some white guy calls. fuck dude i've seen some shitty calls that's why it's like i wish they could do like some some sort of overtime ebi sure. ebi has a cool overtime where you start on the back or you start in an arm bar um but something like cji it's hard to beat cji where you do three five minute rounds after each round you know who won yeah. so i mean that i feel, feel like they, that's a better you know, way to go i think so can we see you in cji next year maybe <laughs> Dude, the guys in CGI are such, like, I'd have to put down everything and just train. I'd have to put down a podcast, put down teaching, put down all my, my coffee shop, my businesses, the things no that are giving me a good return that are setting me up for later in life. I'd have to put them all aside to, to go in CGI. Jim so, I mean, and like I said, the CGI guys are fucking another level. Dude, you, got, you, you have to hook me up with that submission grappling. Which one? No, when you can smack the shit out of people in the grappling. Oh, a combat jiu-jitsu. Yeah. God damn, you'd be good at that. Yeah, I have no idea. If I, 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 want, I, I think that'd be fun as shit. I'd I'm thinking about coming out with a little series on uh, on Patreon, and it could be me can be me and Joe going over some different tutorials, some maybe some different ass-whooping tutorials. You could learn some nice ground and pound from Joe. Forgotten techniques. I've seen Joe fucking damn near kill people being on top of them. One person you don't want on top of you is Joe Diesel. That's goddamn right. He'll pound your fucking puss right into the goddamn <laughs> ground. Yeah. Oh, dude. Like that. At least I heard that. Heard, heard fucking uh, me talking about my dick snapping off. And she was embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so dude. you, you just as a fam, no, no, you as a family just pull all the kids in the, in the living room for the, the premieres of this and just watch it <laughs> eating popcorn. <laughs> oh fuck yeah oh, oh god oh, today yeah. you're gonna hear when your dad snap his root off boy <laughs> we're gonna be proud of that but you, you know he, he's on his phone you're like joey listen listen to this part listen to this part. Wait, so, oh god <laughs> you know you know that our lisa was is, i didn't say is is uh at the after the aftermath of the of the snapping has left me with a warped root if you will oh. Kind of a just crooked, kind of a <laughs> crooked, <laughs> twisted, and just looking like, like, oh. a, like no, no. Let's, but it, but but he's uh, it's 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 hooked for her pleasure. I'll tell you that. Really, I get up in there and just fuck. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Swirl Drop the hip and start. It. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, it, but it is. I mean, it's it's kind of an eyesore, you know. <laughs> but he gets he gets to working. God damn. How have you changed the wrestling training for this camp compared to Aljo? As Mrab pressures forward and much harder, much faster than Aljo. Uh, Aljo pressures too. I mean, if you go, if you haven't seen Aljo's fights, he pressures you. He funkily, he's a funky dude. He pressures you side to side. He brings some pressure. Mrab brings a different type of pressure. He's gonna walk into something. Um, 
But the wrestling, I mean, this training camp was fucking light years better than Aljo fight. I, I tell you that much. Aljo fight, I'm tell we did the air dine and we hit mitts. Fuck. That's what we did. That's what would be terrifying. No we wrestling at all. Zero. That's nuts. At least four weeks out from that. So, Rig, say you walk into the same smoke shop and God the same damn. guys inside. Do you KO him again or do you apologize? Well, honestly, if if uh, if he, I would I would apologize to him if he if he's not if he's not puffed up. You know, if I go on the knees, and I, you can you can sense when a fight's about to kick off. Yeah. I will not. I, I'll, I'll always I always swing on. I always punch first. I'll never be cracked. But of course, I'd go up and apologize to him. You know and. If there's cameras and you punch first, can you get in some serious trouble? Yeah. So now that that being said, you know, like I I, I hit the guy first last time, but he's like I don't know if he was trying to headbutt me or what. You know, what I mean, it's he was he was you know encroaching on me. So uh, yeah, you if, felt threatened. Yeah, and if it's it's the same thing. If I felt threatened, you know, I would, I would hit him first. But yeah, it's not. I would definitely apologize. I w I want peace. I don't want. I would rather not. Fight. Well, it depends what mood you're in. <laughs> so it's if uh, sometimes I'm I'm easily morally provoked mm -hmm. but uh yeah if, if someone if people are nice to me and, and 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 aren't disrespectful i would never get in a fight well you're not the type of guy though to walk in there like me and this guy the other day we're having kind of a stare off and i just went that's oh. all it takes you got to be about, like you need yeah, instead, I'm not, instead of this you go that's what you do well, or, he, no, it's, it's it, that's like the low nod it's but when you it's going fucks up with that i'm usually yeah what how's it going that's usually yeah like it's it. it's uh and they usually go and they give you, yeah, and then you walk home by. But you, you want to eyeball until yeah, something it's, goes it's, on. What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> see? So you, maybe you can work on but that. But it's, yeah, I do. It, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not going to bring anything good in my life, let's be honest. It's going to, yeah. yeah, but. Just a little temporary high. Yeah, it, it doesn't even do that. I start to get worried, and, you know, it's mm -hmm. circle around, like, make, make sure they're, they're getting up. It's like, um, okay, Sugar versus Mighty Mouse, best of three. Who wins? Are we talking Mighty Mouse in his prime? How Mighty he? Mouse in his prime is a fucking problem. I mean, right now it's sugar. But, how like, how old is Mighty Mouse? Mighty Mouse is how old is he, Nick? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. God damn it. Thirty eight. Yeah. Time has he shown uh, signs of letting up? He he looks like just a healthy dude. He? Looks like a healthy dude in shape, strong fucking dude. He likes the street beefs, doesn't he? <laughs> I don't know. Does Did, he? Wasn't he Disney? That's cool as fuck. I did. I thought he had. He had that guy, that Scarface guy. I, I was, I thought it was cool as shit. That good for that guy, man. He's making a fucking making a killing doing. Yeah, that. he is. He's that good guy. at it. He's good yeah. at running those pods. When he was doing the pod with Mikey Musumeci, didn't have any notes, didn't have any. I'm like, he, he did a really good job with that. Okay, what fight did each of you guys learn the most from your career? It could have been something you use coaching tip or a mental relaxer that may. F calm you down or maybe just advice from one of those career changing fights you ever had one of those career yeah changing absolutely fights? i mean the uh the, the for the diaz fight i learned that, that you, you have that voice in the back of your head to tell, like when when uh when diaz was, was like just stop you're done fat fuck he was, he was talking to me i'm like he's right because he hit because we, we were against the fence and he hit me like a body i was breathing in he hit me like a body shot like a small one i was like then he, he called me Jared from Subway. I was all, I was like, oh. And so in my mind, he's like, I was thinking, fuck, I'm done. Just roll to your back. And then, but, but then I, I uh, you know, I, I fought against myself, you know. So I didn't think that was possible. I thought once that ball is rolling, it just rolled downhill. So, yeah, that's, there was a lot to learn about myself in that fight. Yeah, for me, probably when I was 21, 22, and I, I fought this guy who was a black belt, I really had no business being in there with him. And he put me in a Kimura trap, and I just I didn't even know what he was doing. I just felt lost. After that fight, I just really wanted to learn How fucking, you? learn jiu-jitsu. 20, 20, probably. Actually. You hadn't done any, any jiu-jitsu at this point? A little bit, just like a little a couple triangles. Who were you, were you training with uh, Matt Powers at the point? Yes. Just started. had confidence in my hands. So I'm like, I can knock anybody out. And I almost had that guy knocked out too. Duke, 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 Who is putting it? like a Phil Baroni type combo on him on the fence. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. But then after oh, he didn't shit. go down. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. And that sucks when you just dump on someone, everything you got, and you just. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's happened. Uh, would Joe rather have a gay son oh. or, a th or a thought daughter? What the fuck is that? Uh, a slut. I'd batter you if you were here, sir. I'd batter you. <laughs> no, that's that's a fair that, question. I, I, it's, isn't it? 
it's a, a, a gay son. He's yes. bringing Jamal home, and they're going to have a little hangout. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. um, <laughs> Jamal, <laughs> I would, I would much. No, you got to pick a gay son. Yeah, I, I would, I would. I, a gay son that. wouldn't put me in prison. Yes, say that. yes, yes, yes. Should... As long as my son was happy, I wouldn't give a shit either. Yes, that's good. I mean, that's good. Um, sugar versus guillotine, choke versus Marab. I mean, pff, fucking possible, dude. Thank yeah. you for that shit. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about letting other women into your relationship intimately? Do you believe it can be overall beneficial or is a sign that the relationship is struggling and needs a third party to come spice it up? Uh, intimately? Depends where they're coming from. If you're bringing it for an emotional, that's fucking a train wreck every time. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless your relationship is fucking solid. And 100%. you know, your wife knows or your girl knows <laughs> that you're not going to leave her and that she's your partner forever and she has that. And then you have respect for her and you care about her feelings. But if you guys are fighting and you guys aren't fucking and you're like, God, we just got to do something else. And you bring another girl oh, in. It's not, it's not going to work. Imagine that. Fuck, dude. That's, uh, that's just throwing gas on the fire, man. Yeah. Does Joe still have beef with the Diaz brothers? No. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> fucking. Like, I, don't, I mean, I, nothing. Like I, if you walked into a Circle K. Yeah. Grabbing sure. yourself a little Code Red Mountain Dew. Go <laughs> code red Mountain Dew, high on high on Mountain Dew. Yeah, I'd probably, but for sure. Yeah. Well, you don't think you guys could shake hands and be like, I, "Hey, I what's up, I mean, brother?" It's, it's, it's all, I mean, we're older, so it's you know a lot of the testosterone's gone, but there's been a lot. There's been a lot. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. Even even as as late as last year, he, he was talking shit. I mean, it's it's uh, I would love to. I mean, because at the end of the day, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Nick Diaz. You know, mm -hmm. and and uh, but I don't think that's possible. You know, mm -hmm. but. And, and another thing, that that one thing I sent you about mm -hmm. people, but when uh, when I was saying I was saying that I knew Diaz wasn't doing doing good, and uh, he's doing doing a lot better now. Okay. Yeah. So is. was that rumors? No, no, no. He was he was, but the, the, on that on that podcast they said that I said I heard it from his sponsor, which that's fucking that's that's a. <laughs> this fucking question's funny, dude. What? Okay. If you went on a camping trip with 20 plus guys and one night you got blacked out drunk and pass out in your tent, the next morning you wake up and your, your ass hurts oh. and there's a condom sticking out. <laughs> do you ask around or do you just not say anything? I kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, I ask around, just fucking pucker and run. God, imagine living with that. God. <laughs> ask around. You, hey, you, you've been fucking me. <laughs> Who fucked me? I, 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 I <laughs> kick open the tent door. Whose dick's been at me? I would just fucking lose it. I would, I would talk to whoever I gave a shit about and say, who's snuck in there and fucked me? Jump <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> who's been fucking me? Oh, God. Yeah. I could never live with myself. I'd just blow my asshole right out. That's fucking um, terrible. Well, you already got her blown out. So. Oh, you got to hit me that way. Um, what do we got? That's here? a fucking painful fact to live with. Tuesday, Tuesday is the day. We leave for fight week, and then I think they're going to do the after party at Zook Resorts World. So I think 10 days, 10 days away from battle, big battle. What, what, what's Zook Resorts? What is that? What it's, is a, that? it's a little. Um, You're going to get blind a club. Drunk. No, I don't think so. I don't really fucking. After the fights, dude, it's so late. Your emotions are so oh. high and up and down. It's like, oh, I'd rather just chill out. And being vulnerable around people that you have no idea what the fuck their intent is, you know? Getting yeah, drunk. usually the security's pretty good though. Usually yeah. security takes care takes care pretty good. Um yeah, that's about it. So all right guys, what was that for time? Uh one oh five. One oh five, perfect. Uh thanks Joe. You can follow Joe at actually his he's got a new email. No, I started an Instagram. Did you? Yeah. Let's go. What is I it? I did. It's Joe for, I pull this motherfucker up. Took me a long time to actually be able to do it. Well, Instagram's better than TikTok, I think. Well, the uh, the yeah, you're right. What am I talking about? It's uh, yeah, it's Joe dot Diesel Riggs. Yeah, Joe, Joe dot Joe dot Diesel dot Riggs. That's it. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. So hit that like and subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. And then we got the confidential show comes out every week on patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. Now we got a free seven day trial. So if you were thinking about doing the patreon and you're like fuck i'm not sure if i want to do it you got a seven day trial go check it out go check out some of the old content we got some quality shit coming out there all the time so 
If not, no worries. Hit that like and subscribe button. Comment what you think below. I enjoy reading the comments. And uh, we will see you hopefully next week. I, I talked to Shimo and Helen, and they got an extra studio that I can use for a Red Hawk recap. But like I said, next week the main focus is to uh, lay Marab fucking out cold on the canvas. And that's going to be the main focus. So, But if I get some extra time to do the Red Hawk recap, then I'm going to do it. So if not... Follow on Snapchat at Tim Welch MT and you're going to see the behind the scenes of everything. Love you all. See you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye.